chance. Uh, the words in Spanish, I'll try to say them again in Spanish if I uh, stumble, please excuse me, uh, since I don't speak the language. La oportunidad, el peligro, la buena suerte, al azar, lo incierto, uh, and so on. Uh, and what we really try to know is, que traerá el futuro? futuro. This is what we are really always interested in and trying to find out what will happen. Everything in life is probabilistic. Everything is uncertain, and I want to repeat that, everything. Every conclusion we make about the world is probabilistic. Nothing is certain. Uh, the games of chance are very popular. Uh, people are trying to win in roulette, and if you're patient enough, I will speak about that just a little bit. Again, I tried to say this in Spanish so you can read about everything being probabilistic. Um, and I'm always really uh, struck by coincidences. Coincidences mean a lot to me, maybe because I'm a statistician and mathematician. Uh, coincidences happen to me everywhere, but uh, uh, Dr. Romer told you about the big coincidence where um, I met him and a few months later in Paris on the street, but that's because I have a good ear and he was the only one speaking Spanish in all of Paris at that moment. Now, I want to play a game with you which will show us something about probability. Um, there are 20 people in each row here and 10 here. So what I'd like to do is to ask each person uh, at every moment to tell us very loud, as loud as you can, your birthday. I'm not interested in the year, but I'm only interested in the day and the month. So if I start here, there are 20 people here and 10 in the other row over there. Am I right? There are 20 here and 10 in this row. So um, let's think about it beforehand. How many days are there in a the year? 365, that's a big number. But I'm only asking 30 people uh, to tell us what their birthday was. Now, we start over there with the lady, the first uh, uh, on, on, on that side. I want you to say it loud enough so everybody here, I, I'll come down so you can speak into the microphone. And if you are in this row from there up to here and your birthday is the same, I want you to scream, bingo, or whatever, jump up and do whatever you want so we'll know that it's the same birthday. Obviously, I don't know what will happen. We're playing a game. There's no winning or losing here. We're tr just trying to find out what happens. So let's start with the first person over here. 29 de Julio. Uh, 15 de Mayo. October 30. October 31st. 9-11. <laughs> 9 August 11th. 10 de Junio. April 3rd. 14 de Julio. Catorce de julio. Veinticinco de marzo. Treinta y uno de julio. Cuatro de noviembre. Doce de octubre. Dieciséis de febrero. Veinticuatro de marzo. Veintiséis de febrero. Primero de septiembre. Trece de septiembre. Veintisiete de noviembre. Veintidós de octubre. Quince de marzo. Ocho de agosto. 17 de diciembre. 3 de mayo. 3 de junio. 14 de septiembre. 31 de diciembre. I'm going to continue one more line. If not, I'm leaving and I'm leaving you the rest of my minutes. 24 de enero. 20 de noviembre. 6 de marzo. Mayo 24. 10 de agosto. 23. Okay. Thank you very much. How many people are these? From there, 35, 36? 36, okay. So, what did we find out? Out of, say, 40 people, I would have ended at the next, uh, or I would, may have continued, but out of about 40 people, there were two already. So that's uh, something that can happen, and uh, it's unexpected. Here are the statistics. Here are the numbers. If you have 23 people, the probability is slightly more than 50%. So remember, in statistics, we repeat things. I could try it again with another row. It may happen or it may not. 
there is a 50%, slightly more than 50% chance that when you have 23 people, two of them will match a birthday. So the fact that there are 365 days in a year, still in a small number such as 23, the probability is already a half. With 30 people, the probability is already 70%. And if you have 40 people, the probability is almost 90%. So had I gone up to 40, I'm pretty surely would have gotten a match. And with 56 people, which is still a relatively small fraction of 365, the probability is virtually 100%, which is very striking. The thing about probability is that it's very unintuitive. And what happened here is very unintuitive. I'm sure none of you expected it, or maybe some of you did. So this is the graph of how this works. The probabilities rise very fast. And since uh, we're here to learn something, and I learn something from every speaker, uh, what I want to show you is the reason why this happens. The model for matching birthdays, seeing whether several, one or two, uh, two or more people would share a birthday, is like balls falling into boxes. So imagine the 365 days in the year as boxes that are laid out here, and balls, these are your birthdays, randomly falling to fill boxes. Now the chance that nobody will match a birthday and say 30 people, is the chance that all 30 balls will fall into separate boxes. It just doesn't happen because it's unlikely that they will be spread out. And the fact that you have a lack of probability, a small probability that things will spread out. Now, let's think of the worst example. 365 days in a year. The first ball goes into one box, the next one, the second, the third, the fourth, and then the 364th ball has not too many places to go. Right? And the last one is fixed, has to go into the three enders. This is when you don't match. So that's an extremely unlikely event. Now, if you're interested in probability, first of all, here is the formula that shows you how to compute this. It's up there if you're not, um, if you want, you can copy it. And then there's a simple formula below that that will show you uh, how to compute roughly this kind of probability for any kind of category. It could be the week of matching a birthday or any kind of other event that is similar to that. Or finding the same profession with two people. With the, suppose you have, say, uh, 50 different professions. Then the 50 would be the N in the formula, just in case, you, in case you're interested in learning more. Now I come to something else that's unexpected about probability. Uh, usually this bus moves, but uh, doesn't seem to work here. Uh, so why is the bus always arriving late? There's a statistical probabilistic argument for why this happens. This is something we know from everyday life. You want to take the bus, and uh, the, you go to the bus stop, and you know that the buses come every 10 minutes, right? So you're waiting for the bus, you think, you arrive randomly, your wait should be about five minutes, right? The buses are every 10 minutes, you arrive randomly there, should be every five minutes. Your wait should be five minutes, right? But you always wait longer, am I right? You go to the bus, don't you always say, hey, it's not here. Why is that? How does that happen? There's a good statistical argument for that, probabilistic argument for why this happens. I don't know if you can see uh, the picture there. This is the number line. In this case, it's a timeline. And even though the buses arrive at a rate of once every 10 minutes, it's random. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. The average is 10 minutes. Now think about it. When you arrive at the bus stop, it's a Random moment, you arrive uh, al azar, al azar, al I'm sorry, I failed the Spanish test. So you arrive at a certain point at random. You are much more likely to arrive during a wide interval, wide interval rather than a short one. And that's the reason we always wait longer than we expected. So there's a good mathematical reason for everything. Now, every time I talk about probability, people say, get to the real stuff. We want to hear the big one. And that's the probability of love. So this is it. Uh, <laughs> and that, that usually dances around there with the flowers. But it doesn't want to move today. It's transfixed because we're talking about something very important. The big problem, so many girls, so little time for a guy. You can reverse this if you're 
a woman, can probability theory really help? Uh, so sometimes I have people who just want to hear the answer to that if they're single and there is an answer. But I should tell you beforehand that I didn't marry my lovely wife because of that. I didn't use probability or statistics, but I'll show you how to do it in case you want to use mathematics to find the best uh, spouse. Here's the answer. The answer is that you want to take 37%. So let me explain this game. We played the probability game for birthdays. Let me explain the game of love. In the game of love, suppose you're a young person and you're looking to get married in a few years, you beforehand should assume the number of people that, uh, of the opposite sex that you're considering the having the opportunity of meeting and dating and then deciding whether to marry. And what you should do, and again, I'm preaching what I didn't do, is to date if it's 100, now you can multiply. If you think you can date 500, multiply my numbers by five. But if it's 100, you should date 37, uh, since I'm a guy, I'll talk women. You should date 37 women, but do not offer their marriage. You must break up and never see them again. And the assumption of this model is once you broke up, that person will never come back again. This is over. So, you date 37 women, you have a very good time, but you make sure you don't get married. Now you're up to number 38, and you have to keep good notes on the 37. In particular, you want to mark the best among them, the one that's most comp compatible with you, the one that you would have married unless you came here tonight and heard the, uh, the, the, the advice not to marry that person. So you want to take a note of the one that was the best, continue with the 38th. Now the 38th is a candidate. If the 38th is better than all 37 before her, meaning she beats the best of the 37, you marry her and you stop dating. No more dating. And if she is not, you say goodbye and you go to the next. And if you follow this rule, a mathematician would prove to you that your chances of finding the best possible spouse of the hundred, the assumption here is there's a hundred, again, if it's 200, multiply the number by two and, and so on. Uh, the chances are maximized of finding the best one uh, of, of all possibilities. So uh, if everybody wants to try it, they can. I'm not giving you my email or any web page because I don't want hate mail either if it didn't work. But this is what the mathematician would tell you. Uh, here's uh, the answer there. And again, if you're interested in knowing a little more why it works, it's because the number E is there. And there's a little optimization problem here. And so 1 over E is 0.36. And by the way, et cetera, point, about 0.37. And if you're interested in the probability itself, it happens to be the same number. The probability is about 37% that you found the best one if you followed the rule that I explained, which is a very high probability. It's almost 40% of finding the best. What are other possibilities? Is dating two and then finding the best that beats the other two? That will not give you a high probability. Highest probability works with the number 37. Now, uh, I talk about probability, and uh, here you have, what about this kind of probability? What about the probability of the stock market? Um, this is a bad graph. I don't like it at all. I don't think anybody here likes it. Uh, what about this kind of probability? We say that the market is a random walk, and some other speakers would like to kill me for saying it, but I believe, academics believe, that the market is a random walk. This is just a play on words. Is it a random walk or a random fall? And what we've seen in recent days, in recent months, is a random fall. The market goes down very fast. But again, if you follow the law of averages, if you follow probability, the law of large numbers, and so on, the market should be efficient. It probably isn't, but it should be. In which case, if you're looking back using statistics and probability, 20 years from now, what you will have noticed here is a kind of an aberration, and that at some point goes back to normal, where the market's growing at about 8 or 10% a year. Sometimes it 
hasn't done so well for a while, but it goes back some years, it does better than expected. On average, you have this growth. That's what statistics tells us, but of course it's uh, open to argument. The same as the rule for 37. Um, what about roulette, the gambler's ruin? The gambler's ru I can tell you about roulette and probability, and I can tell you one thing about it. Uh, the, a mathematician would say that you should never gamble. The reason you should never gamble is if you gamble a short, with a short term, for example, you tell yourself, I'm going to the casino and I'm going to bet a hundred dollars or a thousand pesos or something like that. If I win, I leave the casino. There's the door. I won the amount I want, I'm out. You could do well on, in general. But if you don't put a stop and you say, let me continue playing, I'm doing well. There's a theorem called the randoms, the gambler's ruin theorem, which says, the gambler's ruin theorem um, says that if you uh, play long enough, even when the odds are, e are equal, meaning even if you have a way of having a 50% chance of winning against the other person, if that person is much richer than you and the casino in general is richer than you, with probability one, you will lose everything. So that's what probability uh, tells us about, uh, about uh, gambling. It's not uh, a good thing unless you can do it in a very limited way. Now, um, if you don't mind, I'd like to make just a quick comment uh, about statistics. Statistics is something that relies on probability and when you're trying to draw inferences about the real world, it's important to give give chance a chance, to give probability and randomness a chance. Nothing that you're saying ever has a 100% probability. So when you're making a conclusion like uh, the key to happiness is children or, or, or not children or, or anything like that, you should attach to it some kind of a probability, sometimes a, a, a measure of accuracy. And uh, something just uh, caught my attention. Um, if the, I, I, I'm not taking, uh, uh, I'm not criticizing here at all. Uh, in, in fact, I, I enjoyed your talk very much. I'm speaking uh, of the first speaker, but uh, if you were alive 40 years ago, uh, there's something called a video phone. And a video phone, I think, is, uh, how do you put it, uh, sticky and emotional. And it's also unexpected, concrete and emotional. But it failed. And it failed completely, but it came back now, and it's called Skype. So f here's a, an example of something that didn't work. And my belief is that it didn't work because of probability. There's just randomness that comes in. And the situation changed 40 years later. And now, of course, we have computers and we say, you know what, we don't mind seeing the person we're talking to. Before they were saying, oh, I want to talk to a person, but I really don't want to see their face. Now with the internet, phones, it came back. So what I'm trying to say is not, nothing in life is certain. Again, uh, you've heard lots of American expressions in the last two days. Americans say nothing in cer is certain in life except for death and taxes. So uh, hopefully somebody can uh, find a way of beating death or taxes. I, I hope they, they tell all of us. Now, I, I want to use my last second. If anybody here has a question, I'll be happy to try and answer it. Any question at all? Do you want to answer? I mean, or? I mean, yeah, if, yes. if you're divorced, you have to start again with a 100? Absolutely, yes. Wow, what so you can do this again and again. You could get married, get divorced, yeah. another 37, another marriage, another divorce, another 37. You can have a really good life. Wow. Thank you very much. Bravo.